At the basis, you need to know exactly what it is that you are passionate about. And you can literally throw yourself in project management, in banking, in project management, in civil, in project management, in tech, in project ma It's literally so versatile. You're going to have to study even more because jobs and careers are constantly evolving. All the people that I know that are in really good places in their careers and in their jobs study while they work. It's great to job shadow, to get mentors that are in specific industries, LinkedIn, your best friend. You need to actually do the research first before you choose the line of study that you are going to go into. That research will inform what kind of careers are in that line of study, what kind of careers or doors could be opened up for you in that line of study. We realize that the world is constantly evolving. everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video it is great to be back to be sitting in my cozy little seat you know what I'm saying? <laughs> welcome back thank you so much for being here as always thank you for choosing me over and over and over again i really truly tremendously do appreciate it now this is going to be the beginning of a new series now 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 let's not get excited let's not be like what what do you mean Gatleo? It's going to be under the stable of the Real Talk videos. However, I wanted to do a series of videos that are very quick fire, rapid fire, like just quick 10, 15 minute long videos where we can talk about whatever it is that you guys would like my opinion on, whatever it is that might be more on the serious side, hence why it is part of the Real Talk series of videos. And I'm really excited to introduce these because if you think about it, generally the videos on my channel are quite long and I'm trying to do just sort of shorter videos that are quick, succinct, succinct and to the point. So this is going to be just 10 with cat, right? Because we're going to be hanging 10, but maybe sometimes we'll be hanging 10, hanging 15 minutes. This one might be a little bit longer because I am introducing the series to you guys. It is going to be under my Real Talk playlist anyway. So any one of my real talk videos you will find the just 10 with cat videos okay so thank you so much for being here today we are going to be talking about something quite a bunch of you guys have been asking me to speak about and that is career goals or anything to do with a career or picking a career if you're just going out of high school and you're going into tertiary and you're not sure what career path to choose what you should go into that kind of thing now I do want to make a disclaimer here folks okay I do want to make a disclaimer here I'm not a career consultant or coach or whatever it may be i'm going to be sharing a little bit about my story in terms of how i got to where i am and then we will talk around what i advise you to do especially when you are in the point in your life where you're trying to pick a certain career to go into or you're trying to pivot because that's what happens a lot of the time that's what happens for many people you either take on an extra career or an extra side hustle that then turns into a career or whatever it may be life is very it's different in that way it's not linear Things happen, things change, you go into certain spaces in your career as you do in your personal life, in your emotional space, in your mental space. You go into certain places that you may have never thought you would find yourself in. So let's talk about it. I got this from one of you guys or a few of you guys on YouTube where you asked me, sorry, sorry about that where you asked me about careers or career goals and I have spoken about these things. I know a lot of you guys may be new and you're not familiar with all of my content but if you go under the Real Talk playlist you will see that I talk a lot about mental health, about careers, about heartbreak. I literally have videos where I talk about these things so please do check them out. They are there. Just run the playlist, watch the videos or listen while you are doing something 
or other. So I put up a little question bar in the community tab and I got a bunch of suggestions for me to speak about a career or career path or career goals and that. Uh, one of them was, hey Kat, please speak on choosing the right career path. It's tricky not knowing what to study or what to do in life. Any advice on that? Cool. I really admire your career path and the way you've been able to balance so many different roles from a full-time job to coaching and content creation. Can you share your strategies for staying disciplined and focused? I do have a video on that in my Real Talk playlist, so please do check it out. Um... Hi Kat, how do you navigate life after varsity or college? Like what happened after you finished your higher learning? So this is going to be part of all of that. What to do after tertiary or even going into tertiary when you're trying to pick a career, right? So before I get into it, I'll start with my own life story a little bit so that I can explain and actually show you how my life has generally pivoted so much that if you are not sure, it is a normal thing. If you're not sure what you want to go into or you've got very different passions of your life and you're not sure which one is the best one to jump into, that is very normal and it's something that happens to the most of us, especially when we are trying to find our way in the world, right? You're at this place where you're trying to find what is it that you love, that you are want, willing to be passionate about each and every single day, and what career do you choose when you leave matric in terms of your studies, which direction or industry do you choose to focus on, study, and then go and build a life into, like have a job, right? So for me, when I left matric, the one thing that I wanted to study was psychology. I knew that all I wanted to do was study psychology. And I thought to myself, okay, I need, I, I, this is just what I want to do. And I went into varsity. I studied at Monash University. It's no longer in South Africa. I think it's now just an Australian university. But I studied there. And when I started, I did a year-long foundation program where I wanted to figure out exactly what is it that I want to do. And in this foundation program, I got to pick certain classes. I think it was um, four classes per semester where I could have very different things that I was studying. One was geography and environmental studies. One was psychology. One was political, um, international politics. And there was another one. And I picked those for that year different semesters so that I could see. Psychology was the one that I wanted to do, so it was definitely there. But I wanted to see, I loved geography in high school, so I was like, mm, maybe let me try that, right? So I did all of that, and when I was in it, I realized I really like political studies. I really like international relations, right? So for me, that's when I dropped psychology, when I went into my official first year, I decided to internalize my focus onto international relations, political studies. And I absolutely loved it. And I did really, really well in it. And for me, that was the moment where I was like, yes, I see myself working for an NGO or working for, you know, the United Nations and things like that. I saw that life for myself. And because of that, I was just like, I, I'm okay with it. Even though psychology was always at the back of my mind, that's why I'm going to go back and study it, okay? It was always at the back of my mind. But I thought to myself, I'm okay with the choice that I've made now, currently. So I continued to then study that. And then I realized after I finished studying it, how difficult it was to get into work in the political international relations, political studies phase or place in my life. I applied and I applied and I applied and I applied and nothing came back. But because I was in a fortunate enough position to, my father took me on at his company to just be an intern. Initially, I came on there to make tea, you know, just make sure everybody is happy, sit there at reception, answer calls. I was a, a receptionist just so that I can have a little stipend at the end of each month. And when I was there, I started to see another different industry. 
right? At this point, I'm shadowing him and I'm shadowing some of the people that are working in the office. So I'm doing things that I never thought I would do. This was not the industry that I wanted to go into. Civil engineering, project management, what is going on? No, building and all of that, uh-uh, you know? And then I thought to myself, okay, somehow we got into project management. And I was, I was, I was watching them work and all of this, and I thought, I want to study this. I want to study this. And because I'm at this transition period where I'm working as a receptionist to get my little stipend, but at the same time, I can still study. That's when I studied project management. So I'm studying and working at the same time. I'm attending classes every Saturday. Listen, I am just PMP, project management, okay, project management. And that's when I realized I love project management. Do you see what I'm saying? Basically, what I'm saying is that your life can pivot and go in many directions. And you may think that this is the one thing that you love, but then you immediately get exposed to another different industry, to something completely different. And when I started studying project management, I realized that I actually love this. I really do. And that's when I realized that project management is not only limited to the civil engineering space. You can have project management in advertising. You can have project management in property management. You can have project management in business management because it's a certain trade that is easily versatile in different industries it's very very good to you you can literally throw yourself in project management in banking in project management in civil in project management in tech in project ma it's literally so versatile but of course with that dependent on the industry that you're in you'd have to take extra courses so that you familiarize yourself with the lay of the land in the particular industry that you're in so you've got the higher level project management training but you do not have the more directive project management training in the certain field that you want to go into. You know what I'm saying? So for me, then I moved on to getting work at ESCOM. And in ESCOM, I was utilizing not only my degree that I got from Monash because I was double majoring in Monash with communication and uh, international relations i was double majoring so i had another major i had another degree that was sitting here with communication so at escom i ended up working in the knowledge management section <laughs> it's so crazy knowledge management section and i was doing communication letters i was writing newsletters using my communications and all of that in a civil industry Crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then while I was there, that's when I then pivoted into project management when I was working in ESCOM. So a lot, it's a lot. But the point that I'm trying to make here is now, to make this video not too long, the point that I'm trying to make here now is you're not really going to immediately know exactly what it is that you want to do or study immediately from high school. You will know, generically, you will know that I want to get into accounting, but you're not sure what part of accounting you want to get into. You're not sure if you want to get into tax or you want to get into, I don't know, uh, 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 chartered accountancy or you want to, I don't know how it works with all these different industries, right? You just know that you want to study accounting or you just know that you want to study environmental studies, but you're not sure whether you want to be the one that's going to do the field work, or you want to go into geology part of environmental studies, or you want to go into theology. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a bunch of things, but I think what you would need to know at the core basis, especially if you are going into studying, what is it exactly that you want to get into? What are you very passionate about that you do not mind staring at books for a full day, just looking at books over and over and over again? What is it that you want to do and that you will continue to have the passion for once you get into studying it? Because the reality of life is you will look at books a lot of the time. And in the only way to 
advance or grow yourself especially in the particular industry that you're in the particular you know walk of job life that you're in you're going to have to study even more because jobs and careers are constantly evolving i am one for short courses i love short courses especially once you get into a certain industry jump into the short courses that will align with the work that you are doing that will make it better for you that will make you grow in that particular industry don't just say that oh well i've graduated i've done this i'm good now good to go all the people that i know that are in really good places in their careers and in their jobs study while they work including myself so we study while we work because we realize that the world is constantly evolving. It's not in a place where you can just say, well, I've studied, I'm done. Now I'm part of the working, I'm a law abiding citizen, a working citizen, and I'm never going to look at books again. Not if you want to grow. If you want to grow, you're going to do certificates, you're going to do short courses, you're going to do whatever it may take to help you evolve in that certain industry. But at the basis, you need to know exactly what it is that you are passionate about. And that is something that I cannot answer for you. That you will know that you love art or you love literature. Maybe you like to read and you want to get into literature. Then familiarize yourself with what careers they can be in literature. This is the thing that I think people don't talk a lot about. You need to actually do the research first before you choose the line of study that you are going to go into. That research will inform what kind of careers are in that line of study? What kind of careers or doors could be opened up for you in that line of study? That literature will help show you that, okay, if I get into that research, right? If I get into literature, this, these are the jobs that I could possibly get into. Then from there, that list of those particular jobs, is there one that fascinates you? then you're already zeroing it down, right? You're already bringing it down a notch to say that, okay, this is definitely one I could get into. Mm, I like this, yeah. I like to study about rocks. I wanna get into environmental studies, but I really like to know about, you know, the different layers of rocks and sedimentary rocks and this and this and this and this. Like, all those kinds of things will help you narrow down, but that takes a lot of reading up and research. And it's not that hard to do. Not with platforms like Insta not Instagram, TikTok, maybe YouTube and all of that. You can find think pieces, research, writings, articles that may help formulate what kind of career or industry you want to get into. And then as you grow with your studies, if you're getting a degree and then you want to get your honors, then you want to get your master's, then you want to get your PhD, doctorate, all those kinds of things, then you're going to zero it in even further. You're going to narrow it down because when you do things like honors and master's and PhDs and all of that, you have a thesis. So with me in my thesis, when I was doing the international relations, my thesis had a lot to do with um the laws that ha are support in support of children and how it impacts children that come from impoverished backgrounds and all do you understand how i had to narrow it down when i was doing my postgraduate studies and that's basically what you're going to do and then you realize after that that okay now these are the lines of work that i can get into that's use the platforms like TikTok, YouTube has great speaking speeches, events, things that you can sit and listen to somebody who you might like and you might like to go into their line of work and all of this. Find out what kind of pieces they've written or what kind of speaking engagements that they've been at and actually listen to what they're saying and listen to what is involved to getting into a career in that particular industry. And that will help narrow things down for you. I cannot tell you what career path to get into. I do not know what you like and what you do not like. I can, however, tell you that it's great to job shadow, to get mentors that are in specific industries, 
LinkedIn your best friend. LinkedIn should be your best friend from when you are in tertiary. You use it like you use Facebook, like you use TikTok. You start engaging with people. You start following the right people that are in that line of work. You engage, you comment, you share articles, you do this. It'll help broaden your horizons in terms of the work that you want to do. And it helps also surround you with the right people. Very, very important. So use platforms like TikTok and YouTube and LinkedIn and all of these um, avenues, just the internet where you can research and learn more about what you want to study. I cannot tell you what to study. There are so many industries. I can, however, say that it is also very important for you to look at jobs that you know are ever evolving, jobs that you know that are not saturated, oversaturated. So look at jobs in finance and see what you can get into in finance. Look at tech jobs. Eh? Look at jobs regarding property management. Look at jobs that you know that even in time, change management, quality management. There's so many jobs that I can't even think of even a smidgen. If you want to get into the social media industry, there's many jobs into the, in the social media industry. You could be an influencer, you could be a social media strategist, you could be a social media manager, you could be a social media, whatever it may be. But it depends on what you, what industry you want to get into. And the booming ones right now I know definitely are tech, accounting, um, medicine, even though we have issues with medicine, right, right, especially in this country, but you can't ever go wrong with, with a career in, in medicine. You can't ever go wrong. And within medicine, there's pharmacy, there's farm, there's this gas. You know, within medicine, there's radiology, there's oncology, there's this, this, this. So there's many, many other smaller streams that you can follow but you have to start somewhere that is broad and then you're going to bring it down. That's pretty much how it is. Right? I can't really share more on that. This video is just going to be a little bit long, but it's fine. The rest of them are going to be much shorter than this. I can't really share more than that. You need to know what your passion is. You need to do the research. You need to look at and surround yourself with people or thought leaders that are in the same industry that you are in. The one way you can do that and fast enough is to go onto platforms like LinkedIn and follow the correct people and the correct businesses and the correct um, industries that might align with what it is that you want to jump into. And then as you keep going and as you keep studying, short courses, best friend, especially when you want to evolve in your career. And as you go and as you keep studying, you keep narrowing it down slowly and slowly. Everybody has, we start out with a burning flame for one particular thing. And then we end up doing something very different. That has happened to many more people than you think. Very, very few people end up in careers where they actually started studying literally from matric. Very, very few people. Some people end up doing software development. Meanwhile, at school, they were studying psychology. And you're wondering to yourself, how did you get into software development? It's crazy. It happens. But that's what life is. That's what life is. Things like this happen all the time. But can you actually get into it and can you actually do it? Absolutely. You definitely can. So, I don't know. That's, that's my two cents on, you know, trying to find your way around finding a career and studying and progressing and evolving in the professional space and in the intellectual space of your life. I really do hope it helps. I can't give you anything more detailed than that. But find your passion. And you can have four passions running concurrently. But there'll always be one that you love more than the other. There'll always be one. And then you narrow that one down. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I hope this video has helped. Thank you so much for watching Just Tin with Cat. Just hanging tin.
you know what i mean just hanging tin with cat and if you did enjoy the video please like it subscribe to the channel thank you as always for choosing me over and over again i'm gonna go and until the next video i'll see you very very soon until then sayonara